Hey guys, welcome back to the Savvy Campers. As you can see, we've got kind of a fun project ahead of us. And if you've guessed it, it's about batteries. So let's talk about this. So our friends at Lion Energy have been kind enough to send us some batteries for testing. So let's open these up and we'll compare and chat a little bit about our old style of batteries and what we're gonna be doing with our new batteries. And as they provided, these batteries to me, they gave me a discount code so you can take advantage of 15% off your next order with Lion Energy. And that discount code is Savvy Campers. And I'll have a link in the description as well as that coupon code so you don't forget it so you can take advantage of their awesome discount. Okay, so here we have the Lion Safari UT1300. And this is a battery we're going to have a lot of fun with. We're gonna test it out um, on the bench, uh, get an inverter, uh, throw some load on it, really see how it does. And then we're also going to take it out um, in the camper and test it to see see how it compares to our lead acid batteries. Um, really see if it's a viable upgrade for most people. And uh, one test we're going to do is we're going to see if it's viable. If you've got two lead acid batteries, maybe they're 75 amp hour, maybe they're 90. Um, could you actually upgrade to just one of these and have that be um, adequate versus um, having two lead acids and replacing those. So. so we've got a fun, fun uh, agenda scheduled. All right, so we've got quite a bit of protection for the battery. We've got our battery terminals there. There we go. So we've got some nice, uh, nice handy handles. Very uh, easy to uh, to grab the battery. Um, Construction-wise, just looking at the case, um, it seems like it's a good good quality, not too flimsy. I don't feel any any soft spots. Seems like it's a little more weighted towards the bottom of the battery. Um, these are the battery terminals, and one, one thought is that that's a lot of space to ground out versus uh, your lead acid battery. But I guess if you, if you take these top terminals off, there's quite a big, big space there too. So real quick, let's check the voltage on it. So this battery comes shipped at 13.14 volts. I'm gonna doubt that you can even see this, so you'll have to trust me. And one of the neat things about this battery is it has a digital uh, display right here, so you can um, hit the button, and you've got uh, battery percentages. You've got 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100%. And when I click that, it's showing it at about 60%. So this battery is 105 amp hour, uh, battery, it's 1,344 watt hour, um, and so this, when you look at when you look at this battery, and compare it to this battery, um, size-wise they're about the same. The uh, Lion Energy battery is a little bit taller, um, but what we're going to see right now is there's going to be a big weight difference. Let's weigh these batteries and see the real difference, and this is where where real differences um, between the batteries uh, come together. So. Okay, so we've got our Lion Energy battery. It, uh, my scale showing 24 pounds. On the product spec sheet, it says that it's 23 pounds, but we'll go with 24. There's probably a little margin of error on our scale. Um, and now let's get the lead acid battery on. And this is coming up at 36.2 pounds, so let's just call it 36. So if you've got two of these lead acid batteries at 36 pounds each, you've got 72 pounds of batteries on the tongue of your trailer, and you've got 90 amp hours of capacity. Two of these batteries will weigh 48 pounds on the tongue of your trailer, and you'll have 210 amp hours of battery. So right here, you've got 2.3 times more capacity of usable capacity than lead acid due to um, 
their efficiency and you can run these effectively down to zero before the BMS cuts them off to save the cells. If you, if you were to compare these to lead acid batteries, uh, one of the greatest benefits is that these are virtually no maintenance. You don't have to do a thing. You just charge them up and use them and go. These batteries, you have to uh, monitor the uh, water level in your cells. These ones are a little bit different. They're a sealed lead acid, so you don't have to. Um, but most lead acid batteries you do, you have to fill up the water with distilled water to be within a certain level. And if that water level does evaporate and go down, you, you can do permanent damage to your battery. Um, the other thing with lead acid batteries is they can actually boil over when you're charging and then you have a big mess on your garage floor or um, out in your driveway and you've got a corrosive material um, that your kids could touch, that you could touch, and it, it stains, so it makes really ugly uh, kind of rust stained colors that are really hard to get out. So that's uh, one advantage to the lithium is you don't have to do that. For winter storage, the lithium is awesome because you can actually store these um, below freezing. So if you accidentally left them on your travel trailer, these would be fine, whereas your lead acid, you would do permanent damage, and they would be, if these cells froze, they would be, um, done for good. Another factor that's great with winter storage is these have a two year uh, time frame in which they can actually retain their charge. Lead acid, um, they can lo lose, for example, in, in our golf cart, they lose about a percent per day. Um, so in this case, with it, without it connected to anything, um, we charge them up at about every two to three weeks in our basement when we storm for winter, um, which is fine, but it's just, it, it's a little annoying having to remember to go down there. You can also throw them on the trickle charger too, um, to keep them, uh, like a little battery maintain, maintainer to keep, keep them floated, um, up. But I always just like to throw them on the charger and with the lithiums, you don't have to do that. And when I say these hold the charge for up to two years, that's not when connected to a travel trailer or something that has a parasitic load. And parasitic load would be, you have your smoke detector or your propane detector or your radio screen on, things like that. It'll drain any battery. So, so under that case, neither of these will last for a two year period um, if connected to something. And one way to, um, to uh, get away from that is uh, most travel trailers have a battery on off switch. So you can just turn your batteries off when you park it in storage for a couple weeks before your next trip, and then you won't drain either of these down to zero. Um, one, one thing you can do to not have that problem, if you have a solar kit on your travel trailer, that will keep either of these batteries topped off, ready to go, and um, parasitic charge won't drain these down to zero, and you'll be ready to go at any moment for your next travel trailer trip. Now that we've got these batteries unboxed, you'll see both of them side by side. And let's talk about what type of uses that you could use these lithium batteries for. So the, obviously the first use is uh, in a travel trailer or RV. These are great contenders for a, an upgrade from lead acid. You'll get a lot more capacity. Um, in our case, we'll go from two uh, 90 amp hour batteries, so 180 amp hours currently, but they're lead acid, so we can only use 50% uh, capacity. So we only have 90 amp hours right now with two. And um, each one of these batteries is rated for 105 amp hours. So we'll go effectively from 90 amp hours to 210. So it will greatly extend our camping times um, by over, uh, over twice the capacity. So really quick, listing off other uses, um, dump trailer, these batteries would be great for. If you have a sailboat, you need to store some energy, you have some solar, these are, these are great batteries for that. Golf cart is another option to use these for. If you have an off-grid cabin, a little gazebo, you want some power, some lighting, maybe some electrical uses, uh, usages, these with an inverter and a little solar panel, these will work wonderful. If you've got a fishing boat and you have an electric trolling motor, these would be great batteries to use for that. Um, they're high amp hours as compared to lead acid, and then there's no maintenance, there's no spilling, there's, um, they're basically kind of a solid state battery. So. Um, uh, really for a boat application where it's being jarred around, these are great batteries for that. Let's look at the size difference from our um, lead acid we have now to this uh, Lion Energy Safari UT1300. And uh, they are the same size. This is a group 24 size battery. Um, so if, if you look at it, they're 
They're basically the same size, they're the same width. The only thing that's different is the line energy is just a tad taller. Let's talk some specs on these batteries. These batteries have a nominal voltage of 12.8 and with lithium, basically the power curve on lithium is they go at a constant voltage and then when they're about empty, they the voltage degrades very quickly. Whereas a lead acid, you start here and then you always go down at a constant level. So when you put some load on a lead acid, it will it will lower that voltage, whereas a lithium will keep that voltage higher for a longer amount of time. The actual rated capacity on these cells is 105 amp hours. Um, standard charging current, you can charge up to 45 amps, whereas on a lead acid, usually I think we're charging about 10 to 15 amps uh, on our travel trailer. Um, max charging current, you can charge these at up to 100 amps, and they'll charge up to 14.6 volts. Discharge current, these are rated for 100 amps of current draw and 150 amp max continuous discharge current. Um, if you go greater than that 150 amp max discharge current, you can do that for about 50 seconds before the BMS, which is your battery management system, will override and shut this battery off. The nice thing about the, having the BMS is it's really there to protect the cells. Um, so this, we actually have a uh, meter right here that shows 100%, 80, 60, 40, 20, and then it'll flash when it's uh, zero. And the BMS will protect from um, overcurrent protection, overcharge protection, um, too high of operating temperature and too low of operating temperature. And the operating temperatures under a charge cycle are 32 degrees to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And then under a discharge cycle, they're negative four degrees to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're in the very cold, you can discharge these, um, but you won't be able to charge them up until it's above freezing, so you don't do permanent damage to your cells. If you store these inside your travel trailer and you have a little battery box, maybe under a couch, something like that, you shouldn't have a problem with uh, charging these if it's a uh, lower temperature outside because you're inside your travel trailer. If you've got your heat on and you're camping, they will stay warmer. If, there are, if they are in a battery box, then um, the internal heat generated by these might keep them a little bit warmer, but I wouldn't take that to chance and be stuck stranded out on a camping trip in the middle of winter um, if the BMS shuts these off. So one question we get is, are these batteries safe? And the BMS really does a great job at protecting these cells from all of the instances that we talked about before, um, overcharging, overcurrent, um, too low voltage, too high temperature, too low temperature. So it'll protect you so you really can't do damage to these cells. Now let's talk warranty. Lion Energy gives a lifetime warranty on these batteries because they have really put them to the test. They test their batteries, 3,500 charge cycles, up to 5,000 and don't have problems. And so they've warrantied these batteries for a lifetime, which in their book is 3,500 charge cycles. And if you charge once a day, basically that's 10 years of use. If you charge once every other day, that's 20 years. And obviously if you're using your travel trailer for a seasonal type thing that you use it for three months out of the year, these should last 30 years, which is really, it's a life, that's a lifetime in travel trailer world. You won't have a travel trailer probably for 30 years, unless you have a nice Airstream and you keep it, keep it clean and keep it maintained. So real quick, while we're on the topic of Lion Energy as a company, um, I had reached out on a Friday night at about 6, uh, 4, 640 p.m. Uh, through their email system, and it basically is a text helpline. And I put a fake name and I asked them a question about their product as well as a recommendation on wiring. And I did send them a trick question on the uh, wiring uh, series, whereas typically travel trailers are wired in parallel. Uh, but surprisingly enough, at um, 6.41 p.m., so 7.41 p.m. their local time, they reached back out and he answered my question with, a, with the BMS as well as a recommendation for wiring. Um, you know, he may have missed the part where I was talking about series wiring and typically travel trailers are parallel, but who knows, there are some travel trailers that may run on a 24-volt system and... Um, it just uh, wasn't a thought. So great job, Lion Energy, for taking the time 
um, to respond back on a Friday night. It's great to have that service. I'm sure if I would have pushed on the parallel versus series wiring, um, he would have responded and directed me the correct way. All right, so let's talk terminals. So these have a little different type of terminal. Here we've got a, a wing nut, and then we've got, got this other tall terminal. So um, let's take the wing nut off. We don't have to take the wing nut off to get the terminal off, but I just wanted to show you uh, one cool thing with these terminals. Um, so then this post actually comes off. So you can throw a couple um, wires in here so you, um, that you can maybe have your tongue jack and your actual travel trailer master power um, and then throw that on, tighten it, and then let's say you have a solar kit or something else, you've actually got this other battery post so that you don't have to try to put two or three battery terminals just right here. You actually have essentially two posts and I kind of like it. We'll see, see how it works. Hopefully these are not too tall for our battery case because if they are, then we'll just have to use just the wing nut. But with these batteries, we have several projects planned. We're going to uh, hook them up to an inverter, do some bench testing against uh, lead acid batteries and really see, could you replace two lead acid batteries with a single battery? How long is two batteries? of lithium going to last. We're gonna throw them on the travel trailer, take it out, test it, see if we can run the microwave, run the AC, run things, and see how, how many days we can get out of it. On our lead acid batteries, we typically get about two to three days, um, and we don't have an inverter right now. There's, they just don't, um, there's so much parasitic load on a, on a travel trailer. And when I say parasitic load, obviously we're using the uh, fridge, the water heater. Water heater is gas, but it still takes a little bit of electricity to run it. We've got the water pump. Um, we take showers, things like that. So two to three days is with actual use, not just sitting unused um, in a parking lot. All right, so thanks for watching the unboxing video and kind of our initial thoughts on the Lion Energy Safari UT1300. We really like this battery and we're really excited to use it. Um, so stay tuned for more. If you wanna catch the other videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next videos. See you at the campground.